Standard 6, Subject Maths, Chapter 5, Decimal Fractions, Practice Set 14. Students, you already know what are decimal fractions and you also know how to add and subtract them. So let's recall. Nandu went to a shop to buy a pen, notebook, eraser and paint box. The shopkeeper told him the prices. A pen costs four and a half rupees. An eraser one and a half. A notebook six and a half. And a pen box twenty-five rupees and fifty paise. Nandu bought one of each article. Prepare his bill. If Nandu gave a hundred rupee note, how much money does he get back? So in the picture, you can see Nandu paying rupees 100 note to the shopkeeper. So how much will he get back? First, we will have to check what his bill amounts to. So we'll have to make a total. Let's see. Pen, he bought one for rupees four and a half. Four and a half we know means 4.50. 4 rupees 50 paise. Notebook he bought for 6 and a half. 6 and a half means again 6.50. Eraser is given he bought for 1 and a half. So 1 and a half means 1.50. And a paint box for 25 rupees and 50 paise. So 25 rupees 50 paise is 25.50. Now when you add it up, you get your total as 38 rupees. 38.00. So now, what your answer will be? 100 minus 38 is equal to 62. So in your textbook on page number 29, you can enter these values in the boxes. 100 minus 38 is equal to 62. That means Nandu will get 62 rupees back. So here we made use of decimal numbers and we added them and wrote our final answer. So similar things we are going to do in our practice set number 14. In the table below, Write the place value of each of the digits in the number 378.025. Now first we will have to understand the place. We have hundreds, tens, units, tenths, hundreds and thousands place. So how do we write it as hundred? Hundreds place as 1 and 2 zeros. Tens place we write as 1 and 1 zero. Units place is just 1. Tenths place is 1 upon 10. Hundreds place is 1 upon 100. This is after decimal point. And thousands place is 1 upon 1000. Now let's place the digits. Digit 3, 7, 8. Tens place 0, hundreds, 2. And thousands 5. Now we are supposed to write the place value. So let's see. Some sums are already done for you. We have to fill in the blanks. So let's see what our answer will be. The place value for 3 is 300. Since it is placed in hundreds place. The place value of 7 is 7 into 10. That is 70. Place value of 8. 8 into 1 is equal to 8. It's in units place. Place value of 0 is 0 upon 10 which is also equal to 0. Place value of 100 is 2 upon 100 is equal to 0 0.02. After decimal point there should be 2 places as there are 2 zeros in the denominator. So we take 0 where there is no number to be filled up. 5 upon 1000 is equal to 0 0.005. Here also you will see after decimal point 3 places as there are 3 zeros in the denominator. So this way we have revised the concept of decimal fractions.
So let's move on to question number two, where you are going to add the decimal numbers or fractions. First sum: nine hundred and five point five plus twenty seven point one nine seven. So arrange the numbers properly. Point should come below point when adding, and the numbers to its left are written to the left, and number to its right are written to the right. Now nine hundred and five point five we had. We add two zeros so that we can equalize the numbers. Now you add zero plus seven seven, zero plus nine nine, five plus one six. Decimal point as it is comes down. Five plus seven twelve, two and one carried over. Two plus one three, and nine as it is. So nine hundred and thirty two point six nine seven is your final answer. Second sum. Thirty nine plus seven hundred point six five. Add zero plus five is five. Zero plus six is six. Decimal point comes down. Nine plus zero is nine. Three plus zero is three, and seven comes down. So seven hundred and thirty nine point six five is your second answer. Third sum. Forty point zero zero zero. Plus twenty seven point seven zero zero plus two point four five one. So you will see the arrangement: decimal point below decimal point, and the numbers which are to the left of decimal point will come accordingly, and those to the right will be written as it is. If there are no numbers to the right, we just put a zero to cover up the empty space. Okay. Now add zero plus zero plus one is one. Five. Seven plus four is eleven. One carried over. Seven plus one eight plus two, ten. Zero. One carried over. Four plus two six and one carried over seven. So your final answer is seventy point one five one. Do not forget to write the decimal point. Now let's move to subtraction sums. Question number three. Subtract. First sum. You will arrange the sum. Same like addition. Decimal point below decimal point. Left numbers to the left, right numbers to the right. Now subtract. So for subtraction, you need to borrow. Wherever you cannot subtract, you know already the subtraction. Wherever you cannot subtract the small the small number, you have to borrow and make it greater. So zero becomes ten. Ten minus five is five. Six will become five. Five minus four is one. Okay. Then nine minus three is six. Decimal point as it is five minus two three and eight as it is. So eighty three point six one five is your final answer. Second sum here borrowing is shown. It's not compulsory to show borrowing in your working. You can do it directly also in your mind. Okay. So four we cannot subtract five from four. So we borrow and make it fourteen. Fourteen minus five is nine. One was left. One minus four not possible, so we borrow one, and it becomes eleven minus four seven. Decimal point as it is. Do not forget the decimal point. Two becomes one and borrow one, so eleven minus seven four. Three becomes two, borrow one, so twelve minus nine three. Six becomes five and it comes down as it is. So final answer five hundred and thirty four point seven nine. Third sum, five borrow becomes fifteen. Fifteen minus six nine. Nine minus eight one. Nine minus one eight. Decimal point as it is. Zero becomes nine again. Nine minus seven two. Nine minus one eight. And one comes down as it is. So your final answer is one eighty two point eight one nine. So you are just carrying out your normal subtraction here. Only the decimal point has to be placed properly. So we are done with the subtraction sums. Now let's move on to question number four, which is a word problem. Avinash travelled forty-two kilometers, three sixty-five meters by bus, twelve kilometers, four sixty meters by car, 
and walked 640 meters. How many kilometers did he travel altogether? You have to write your answer in decimal fractions. So what we will do? First we will convert this kilometer meter in decimal number. That is 42 kilometer 365 meters can be written as 42.365 kilometer. So that's what we are going to do for each and every fraction and then add them. So let's see the solution. Distance travelled by bus is equal to 42 kilometers 365 meters. You can show the conversion as shown here is equal to 42 kilometers plus 365 meters is equal to 42 kilometers plus 365 upon 1000 kilometer because 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meters which is equal to 42 kilometer plus 0 0.365 we convert it into decimal number is equal to 42.365 kilometer. Now is it necessary to show this conversion? If you are able to do the direct answer that is is equal is equal to 42.365 kilometer you can write it directly next distance traveled by car is equal to 12 kilometer 460 meter same you have to write it finally as equal to 12.460 kilometer how you get that is shown in the form of steps then distance traveled by walking is 640 meter 640 meter means in when we convert into kilometers we have to divide by 1000 that gives us 0 0.640 kilometers now that we have converted this entire numbers into decimal fractions the distance we will add them using this decimal fractions therefore total distance traveled altogether is equal to distance traveled by bus plus distance travelled by car plus distance travelled by walking is equal to 42.365 km plus 12.460 km plus 0 0.640 km. The addition is shown below. Okay, you add 5, 6 plus 6, 12 and 4, 16, 1 carry over, 6 plus 4, 10, 13 and 1, 14. 1 carry over, 2 plus 2, 4, 1, 5, 4 plus 1, 5. Thus, the total distance travelled by Avinash altogether is 55.465 kilometers. So, first we convert them into kilometers and then add them. Okay, the sum is very simple. Do try to solve it on your own. Question number 5. Aisha bought 1.80 meter of cloth for her salwar and 2.25 meter for her kurta. If the cloth cost 120 rupees per meter, how much must she pay the shopkeeper? So we will have to add the cloth that is required by her and multiply finally by 120. That way we will come to know how much she has to pay to the shopkeeper. So let's see the steps. Total length of cloth bought is equal to add, add it up 1.80 meter plus 2.25 meter is equal to 4.05 meter. Working is shown below. Cost of 1 meter of cloth is equal to rupees 120. Therefore, cost of 4.05 meter of cloth is equal to the total cloth 4.05 into the cost 120 is equal to. 405 upon 100 we convert it into a fraction okay so 405 upon after point there are two places so upon 100 you have to take into 120 is equal to 405 into 120 upon 100 into 1 is equal to 48600 upon 100 0 0 gets cancelled and you are left with rupees 486 Therefore, amount to be paid to the shopkeeper is rupees 486. Question number 6. Sujata bought a watermelon weighing 4.25 kg and gave 1 kg 750 grams to the children in her neighborhood. How much of it does she have left? 
Now she bought a watermelon, okay, and she gave a part of it. So what is left is we'll come to know only when we subtract, right? So let's see the solution now. Total weight of the watermelon is equal to 4.25 kg. Weight of the watermelon given to the children is equal to convert it into kilograms in decimal. 1 kg 750 grams becomes 1.75 kg. So now we will subtract. Weight of the watermelon left with her is equal to total weight of watermelon minus weight of the watermelon given to the children which is equal to 4.25 kg minus 1.75 kg is equal to 2.5 kg. The working is shown below. So you can say that the weight of watermelon left with Sujata is 2.5 kg. Okay. Last sum, question number 7. Anita was driving at a speed of 85.6 km per hour. The road had a speed limit of 55 km per hour. By how much should she reduce her speed to be within the speed limit? So, her speed is given and the limit is also given. And now we can see that her speed is more than the limit. So, to find how much she should reduce, we have to subtract right so let's see the solution original driving speed of anita is equal to 85.6 kilometers per hour speed limit for driving is is equal to 55 kilometers per hour therefore speed reduced by her to be within the speed limit is equal to original driving speed of anita minus speed limit for driving is equal to 85.6 kilometers per hour minus 55 kilometers per hour. This is equal to 30.6 kilometer per hour. The working is shown below. Thus, Anita needs to reduce her speed by 30.6 kilometer per hour to be within the speed limit. So, these were some simple sums based on addition and subtraction of decimal fractions. Do practice them well. Stay safe. Keep learning. Thank you.